Today, I will teach you guys how to play Ezreal like a high challenger player. And you don't only have to take my word for it. In the game that I'm going to show you guys today, I actually had the guy that is number one on the EU leaderboards. He was in my team. So what does that mean? And he has a 75% win rate, by the way. Uh, really, really impressive. But what does that mean? It means that the enemies also had really, really high challenger players. So that's why today's video is going to be absolutely perfect for me to teach you guys how to play Ezreal because I was in that game, right? So Ezreal, so powerful. S plus tier ADC. Just the, the, the amount of carry potential that he has is through the roof. Like him, him and Vayne have the incredible late game carry potential, but he has like a little bit of an easier early game because he is poking. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how you can get to that hard carry potential in the late game super easily with Ezreal, because there are a lot of things that you can do with Ezreal to just completely dominate the game, guys. So in the beginning part of the video, I'm going to explain to you guys how to build Ezreal. There's timestamps in the description to go to the gameplay immediately. So the default build that the game gives you for Ezreal is already pretty nice, like, you know, starting with Mana Mew and then going for Trinity Force and then here for some nice items too. But I did some tweaking to it and let me just tell you, yes, you start with a Mana Mew, this item is super cheap. It costs like 2700 gold and you can always get it before the first dragon. And if you get a, if you get a kill early on, you can actually get it before 3 minutes as well. So this item is going to be your first item and keep in mind, it's not going to be strong as a Mana Mew. The real power comes when you get the Mura Mana, guys. It's gonna take some time to stack but as i said ezreal was a late game champion so in the early game you know you're still gonna be okay but you're not gonna be as strong so you have to keep that in mind but more on that during the gameplay part of the video second item you go for the trinity force but you don't only go for the trinity force make sure you buy sheen first i'm gonna repeat make sure you buy sheen first because what sheen is gonna do every time like every time you hit your first ability you apply on hit effects so you're gonna apply that bonus damage of the sheen every single time you hit your first ability guys which is like this is already an insane power spike on Ezreal getting a man immune and a sheen because it's gonna amplify the damage of your first ability by a lot it's really really strong so yeah after that you finish off your 24 force or if the enemy has a lot of healing, you actually do not finish your Trinity Force. After your Sheen, you build Executioner's Calling. I only recommend you to do this if the enemy really has a lot of healing that you need to cut. Um, but yeah, if you don't need to actually cut their healing, you can go for the Trinity Force immediately. And when you finish the Trinity Force, you'll likely have Muramana. This is where this is where the real Ezreal starts. Like this is where the real power comes from Ezreal. Your ultimate is going to do insane damage. Your first ability is going to do insane damage. Just your damage is gonna go from here to here. Like this, this is the point where you become super strong on Ezreal and your playstyle really changes. And I'll show you how the playstyle changes. So your third item, it's situational. In 90% of, the, no, actually, I would always go for Play the Room King third item. See, the thing is, I was gonna say that Cerula's Grudge could be good as your third item if you need the slow. I mean, it's true, it, it's good for the slow, but the thing is, you have so much more damage with Blade of the Rune King as your third item. It's like, un, it's unparalleled, it's so much more damage. So as I said, only you're not gonna get the slow, but the thing is, the passive of the Blade of the Rune King is gonna allow you to steal movement speed from one enemy anyway. So this item is gonna allow you to catch up to a single enemy very easily. However, keep in mind the Cyril Squatch is really good in team fights, especially with your ultimate, because it's gonna slow all of the enemies. But as I said, just go for the Blade King third item. And as your fourth item, Cyril Squatch. If you have the Executioner's Calling, go for Mortal Reminder instead, of course, because yeah, that's more efficient. So yeah, Cyril Squatch is your fourth item. And as your last item, don't go for Guardian Angel actually. I just feel like Guardian Angel is unnecessary on Ezreal. Death Stance is going to give you so much physical vamp and it's going to give you tankiness. What this is going to allow you to do is you can continuously fight with the enemy and you're like you're going to heal up the damage that you take. All you have to do is with your playstyle, and I'll show you how, is just keep fighting, keep hitting the enemy because you do so much damage and with the amount of lifesteal that you're going to have, which is going to be 10 plus 10 plus another, what is it, like 8? You're gonna have 28% lifesteal. So just keep damaging the enemy and you're gonna heal up so hard. Oh, by the way, about the boots. Um, here I have Glutinous Griefs, but you can. Um, I actually generally go for Ionic Boots of Lucidity. I would only go for Glutinous Griefs if I want more sustain in the early game. But Ionic Boots are generally gonna be better because it gives you the cooldown reduction on your first ability, third ability, and your ultimate, especially your ultimate. Like Ionic Boots is what I would go for 90% of the games. Now for your. Um, 
For your enchantments, you either want to go for Ionian Stasis or Stasis Enchant, or you want to go for Quicksilver Enchant. I do want to talk about Quicksilver though, because this one is severely underrated, as it can be very good against big CC champions. Like when you're against an Ash, Galio, Ari, Evelyn, and they do this big CC on you, boom, you use the QSS or Quicksilver Enchant, and you get out of that CC. It's really, really powerful. And for your runes, Conqueror. Always go for Conqueror. It's pretty easy to stack up in a late game. Even though you're a poking champion, Conqueror is still worth it because in those longer fights, you're going to do absolutely incredible damage. For my second rune, I personally go for Hunter Vampirism. You could also go for Gathering Storm, but Hunter Vampirism is going to provide you more value in that mid game because it gives you a lot of attack damage when you get some takedowns and it gives you the physical vamp, which as I said again, is really, really good on Ezreal. For your third rune, Hunter Titan. I would actually almost always go for Hunter Titan because you're a bit vulnerable to CC because yeah, if you get CC down, you're going to die. But if you have Hunter Titan, you can just escape, right, with the tenacity and you're going to have the, the uh, what is it, 120 bonus max health, which is really big in the late game. As your last rune, you want to go for Mana Flow Band, just so you can spam your abilities. And it's also going to give you a little bonus attack damage, because that's how Mana Immune works. So for your spells, you go for Flash and Barrier. You always go for Barrier, always, because you really need it on Ezreal. You want to you know, you wanna have that sustainability so you can keep hitting the enemy, so that's why you always go for Barrier. So yeah, that was it about the build. Let's now get into the gameplay. Alright, on to the gameplay, and as you guys can see, the Pantheon, it's the same name as the number one guy on the leaderboard, which is really, really impressive. And th yeah, they were talking really funny, uh, like the people in my team were talking really funny stuff in the draft, so I asked my duo queue guy, which is Keys, which is the mid laner, who are these guys, right? And here he says Panth is random, I was like, wait, what? He's just a random? But he's actually referring to random as in the, the number one player. I, I didn't know it was a guy named random, but this guy is just incredibly impressive. I mean, 75% win rate. Jesus Christ, a challenger rank. So you guys know this game is going to be a banger. We have really high skilled teammates. We have really high skilled enemies. We have a very late game game. Honestly, just take your popcorn. Like, just, just give me a second. I have popcorn right here. I ate one earlier today, but I could say I could save one for you guys. There's two in here. I have a date tomorrow, so I'll, I'll have one for myself. But I can give one to you guys, right? Um, yeah, I, I actually have to put it away. Okay, I don't know why I did that, but take a look at this. My laning was actually not that good here. As you can see, we're actually getting poked out. And the reason for that is because, first of all, Ezreal is pretty weak in the early game. Secondly, Vayne can actually poke Ezreal with her first ability. Like, you can see that the Vayne is actually doing that very effectively. And the enemy Vayne was really, really good in this game, by the way. And against a matchup like Thresh, you actually have to be very careful. Because um, you just have to use your first ability to poke. Like, look, this is, this is not good, what, what happened here really really dangerous as you can see but take a look at this i stunned the vein exactly under the turret like as you can see i, I didn't just run away because the enemies were obviously winning the trade i kept my eyes on what's happening on the map and now this is very important the vein obviously made a mistake but it could have gone unnoticed if i just didn't really you know if i was just like yeah i don't want to fight no take a look at your champions i have a brom in my team i saw that the brom passive was stacked on the vein and Ezreal can actually hit a lot of, you know, he can proc the Brom passive very easily with your basic attack and then first ability and then another basic attack. So I saw that the Vayne ran into the turret and I immediately attacked her, immediately. And I was actually lucky enough to get her under the turret and I just went all in. Because early game the turret deals really, really big damage. So that's why I was actually able to kill the Vayne in a losing lane, guys. <clears throat> so... This doesn't mean that you win your lane, because as I said, Ezreal is not the strongest in the early game, so you, you know, and the way that you can actually compensate for it is with your first ability. Like, look, they're freezing the lane, but what am I going to do? I'm just going to try to take the mains with my first ability. Oh my god, look at that. These guys are crazy. What are they doing? I'm 1v2 here, but I'm actually winning. I used my barrier, but these guys, uh, they're aggressive. What the hell? They both use their flash. I, I wanted to type it, but it was a bit too dangerous. So yeah, I wanted to hit my ultimate because I saw that the enemies were there. But unfortunately, I only hit the vein, which is fine, I guess. But I wanted to hit the other guy too to kill him. I almost died. Oh my god. But yeah. Um, in the early game, as I said, with Ezreal, you just... Like, your first ability is really what, what's going to be your main ability. I mean, that's true throughout the whole game. But what I mean with that... Oh, what I mean with that is... 
just take farm with it. Just don't get too close and take farm with your first ability. Oh, that's a kill, right? Yeah. Boom. It's actually not a kill. Unbelievable. Wow. Oh, he got him. So, yeah, you know, your first ability, just farm with your first ability. Stay away from the minions. Don't get too close to the enemies because most enemies are going to be able to easily outpoke you in the lane. Even though you're a poke champion, it's kind of funny. So just stay from a long range, as I did in this game, and only go in when your lane gets ganked or when you see a really nice opportunity to go in, like when I stunned the vein under my turret, for example, right? I used my ultimate here because they're going on the Diana. Really, really good ultimate, but unfortunately the Zix, the Zix first ability missed. But that was, that was like, you can also snipe cross map with your ultimate, of course, right? I want to point out, though... <clears throat> The Zix in our mid lane, he's a he's a support main, and you know, he, he never plays Zix, so keep that in mind. You know, he's a really really good player, and he just never plays Zix, so you know that's 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 why <laughs> he just got auto filled in mid lane basically. As you can see here, I'm just kind of playing it safe again, and this is what you have to do. But the way that you can do it, as you saw, when I used my third ability to dash away, I immediately shot my first ability as well, and that's how you can actually easily hit enemies like that, because. Um, she didn't really see it coming after my after my third ability because I flashed away, but then boom, you know, you just shoot it, you hit it. Oh, it's gonna happen here. This is a bit risky, but we have Nuna. Nuna can always secure objectives, so there there's no problem. Nuna just uses his first ability and then secures any objective. It's so easy. He actually kind of yeah he got it, but he didn't really do it effect. He didn't really do it well. And there's a team fight. Let's take a look at this fight. I just completely missed my ultimate there, by the way. Okay, I see the vein there. Vein is vulnerable, I just go on the vein, of course. Boom, he's dead. Easy kill. And the thing with Ezreal is... I want to talk about the second ability as well. And this, I like to call this the late game ability. Like, okay, this ability gives you bonus damage and it refunds energy. But the thing is, in the early game, like, you still want to use it. But the real power comes in the late game. This ability deals the most incredible amount of damage in the late game and you really get rewarded by hitting it on an enemy and then popping it, right? So some tips that I have to you guys on hitting the second ability, because I know that it can be hard. First of all, if an enemy dives you, it's always going to be a free hit. Second of all, you can actually hit it after you, uh, you flash to them with your third ability. So if you want to be playing very aggressively, you can actually use your third ability to dash close to the enemy. And when you do that, do not shoot your first ability. No. First, you shoot your second ability. Unless, of course, you feel like you can't hit your, uh, you can't hit two abilities in a row. But generally, you flash to the enemy and you hit your second ability first and then you hit your first ability. Because it's just way more efficient. It deals so much more damage. It's like totally worth it to do. Oh, that was a really nice dodge. I'm just kind of waiting for an opportunity here to go in, like when my Braum goes in, I just want to fully commit. Like when a Braum ult uses his ultimate, I can immediately go in and just do so much damage. So let's take a look at what's gonna happen. I'm just kind of waiting for the Braum to do something here, for me to go in. I'm like pretty fat in this game, I'm playing really really clean as well right now. So the Braum is looking for something, but he just can't find it unfortunately. Yeah, it's fine. Like, it's fine. I want to go back now, get my sheen, and get some other items. Like, you don't want to be staying with 2,800 gold in your pocket, right? You just want to be getting some items. Like, right now, I'm already going to be pretty strong. I got the Ionian boots. I got the sheen. I have my mana mu or the Mura mana. This is a point where I'm pretty strong. But when I get my Trinity Force, that's where the real late game Ezreal kicks, guys. And you will see it. And you will feel it when you play Ezreal. Um... So about the third ability of Ezreal, it's literally a flash, right? And you have to be very careful with this ability. But I do want to point something out, is you don't want to be too careful with it. You do want to be using the ability, because something that some people don't know about Ezreal is when you hit your first ability on the enemies, it's going to reduce all of the cooldowns of your other abilities by 1.5 seconds. So when you dash in with your third ability, especially in the late game, the cooldown is not going to be that long. Oh, I want to talk about what I just did here. Guys, what I just did here is I actually shot my first ability on those minions. And the reason that I did it is because I wanted to maintain my stacks, my attack speed stacks. So the way that Ezreal works is if you hit your abilities on an enemy, you get stacks, up to four stacks, right? And it gives you bonus move, bonus attack speed. And this is very important because it increases your damage by a lot. So when taking a turret like that, 
you can just hit your first ability on a jungle minion for example right oh my god the damage on a jungle minion to just maintain your stacks as you saw that i did right there just to maintain the stacks oh i can get my trinity force i just want to fight at this point like when you get your trinity force you have like a, an absolute peak of a power spike you really want to be looking for a fight right there See, the thing that's happening in this game, my team is fighting a lot without me, which I don't really like because I'm the main carry of the game. Well, Pantheon is also dealing a lot of damage, but at this point, at this point, I'm going to be dealing the main damage, right? Well, actually, no, Pantheon is, to be honest, but I'm also going to be a big part of the damage. Um, so, they're, like, they're, look at this, they're engaging in fights without me, and honestly, not part of the blame is on me. Like, it's true that I'm farming, but I should have also been a bit more with my teammates to help them, right? Oh, that was risky. But we got the kill. So at this point, I just want to stay in the backline and just deal as much damage as I can. As you can see, oh, the Brahm ultimate actually saved him. But just look at this. I'm dealing so much damage from the backline. And as I said, when you can, you always want to use that second ability. Like the Ramus was really slow, so I could easily hit it on him. It just deals so much damage. So don't ignore that second ability. Please use it, because it deals so much damage in team fights, guys. And you, like you can see, when I hit my first ability, it reduces the cooldowns of any other abilities as well. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying this video, please make sure you give it a like. This is a really high skill game. And I actually played like 30, 40, yeah, probably 40 Ezreal games before this video. Although I'm already good at Ezreal, I really like to play a lot of games on a certain champion before making the actual video. Because I really want to make a top quality video, because you'll see, like, playing Ezreal like me in this game doesn't come out of no nothing. You actually have to play him a lot, because this is a really, really hard champion to play. <clears throat> yeah, I take the red buff here, by the way. Oh, another good combo that I have for you guys is using your first ability and then immediately your third ability. This way, you will do so much burst damage. Like, your first ability and the damage from the third ability is gonna land at the enemy at the same time. Oh yeah, you can of course dodge the enemy like that too when he goes on you. Easy, just easily like that. Yeah, it was really clean. Like, he, the Ramus tried to go on me, I used my second ability on him, and then I dashed away. I didn't just dash away, I used my second ability as well. And it's a really important part, because your mindset, like, let me tell oh yeah, champion mindset. Let me tell you what your mindset with Ezreal has to be, right? So, there's a few. First of all, poking, right? You have to be poking the enemy, you can be very annoying, but I want to talk about the more important mindset, which is dealing as much damage per second as possible now this may sound like a stupid tip but let me elaborate on that so when you're playing Ezreal in a team fight you really want to be positioning carefully so you don't take a lot of damage but you also want to be dealing as much damage as you can like just keep damaging the enemy and sometimes it's actually good to overextend a little bit for that because the reason is you have so much physical vamp with my build so you're gonna heal it up anyways right you're gonna heal up the damage anyways so let's take a look at how I approach this fight here actually. I go in, second ability, or oh, I missed my first ability, absolutely stupid. If I had hit that first ability on the vein, it would have been a guaranteed kill. That was really, really bad by me. Yeah, that was so stupid. Oh my god, how did I miss that? Damn. Yeah, that's the thing about Ezreal. You get punished so hard for just missing one ability. It's so annoying, but that's just how Ezreal works, guys. It's a really high skilled champion, but if you do hit a lot of the abilities, it pays off massively. It pays off so much. It's insane how, how much it pays off, really, on Ezreal. <clears throat> it's a high skill by reward champion. That's how Ezreal really works. Yeah, and here I'm just farming like a crazy dude. And that's also what you want to do on Ezreal. Just keep farming. Wherever you're walking on the map, you want to be, you want to be farming all the time. But the problem of my team is they're fighting. Look at this. Why the hell are they fighting without me? They're doing fine actually, but it's just so risky. Why are they fighting without me? It's so risky. Like I'm desperately trying to enter the fight with my ultimate, but they just need to wait for me. Just wait for me and we win every single fight. Like look, they're just... It's not, this is not good. We're giving them kills for no reason. Why are we doing that? So here I go in. And as you can see, like, I do so much damage. Look at this. Just look at this. There, boom. They can't do anything. Apparently, the vein had an 1100 gold shutdown, but I just got it. I haven't died a single time in this game yet. But they, yeah, they like, we're not doing too well in this game macro-wise. We're just fighting, fighting without me, the ADC. 
and the enemy Vayne is actually sticking with her team a lot, which is rewarding her, but the thing is, if my team just didn't fight a lot, I would have been super fat compared to the Vayne, because my team gave the Vayne so many kills that she's actually almost catching up to me gold-wise, which shouldn't really have happened this game, because I farmed so hard this game, and I got so many kills as well, like I should have been ahead by two levels, 4000 gold already, but yeah, we gave her, we gave her a lot of free kills, which is really not good. So the inferno is up, but I almost have my next item. So I tell my team here, I'm pretty sure I tell my team, guys, please don't fight. Because I know what my team is going to do. Probably going to tell my team, don't fight. Yeah, yeah, I tell them, guys, please just let me get my item. Yeah, I said 4k gold just to make it, just to exaggerate a little bit. Just so they wouldn't fight. But what are they doing? They're fighting again. Oh my god. It's like, they're doing fine. But, and now, look, this so... What are you doing? It's just so unnecessary. Like, look at how much damage I'm dealing. Just look. Look. Why did they fight without me? I just don't get it. I, I honestly don't get it. Here. Boom. Another kill. And boom. Another kill. I mean, this is how easy it is to just win a fight. Now, this is good for us, but two of us died for no reason. They just fought without me for some reason. I have no idea why. Here we should probably do the dragon. Instead, we go to the Baron. I mean, we can do Baron, maybe. But we should have gone to the Dragon. It's a bit too risky to go for the Baron. Especially because we're taking all the farm. We, should, we could have definitely gone for the Dragon. Like, here I see that the Pantheon doesn't help. So I didn't go for it either. We could have probably done it if we skipped some farm. But we should have definitely gone for the Dragon. It would have been an easy Dragon. Look at my damage, like against the champion as tanky as Ramus. Oh my god. By the way guys, I really suggest you to watch this video all the way throughout the very late game. Because it is such an interesting game. You're really gonna love it. Yeah, here I died. But it's actually fine as you can see. My team is doing really well. Because like I did a lot of damage. I kind of did my job in this fight. It's still really hard because their vein is so strong now. Ahem. <clears throat> Like, we're really not playing this game too well, but it's okay. Like, I'm so fat. I'm 10 on 1 on Ezreal. Like, the game should pretty much be over if that's the case. But you can see, I have 17,000 gold, but the vein has 16,000 gold. That's, that's just, you know, the vein. Like, the enemy vein has been playing really, really well. She rotated really well with her teammates, which I didn't do, which I got punished for, actually. Even though I'm ahead in, in gold, I could have been way more ahead if I stayed with my team. Because, like, I should have seen in this game that my team just wants to fight all the time. Here they actually took a really good fight because they caught out the enemy vein. The Pantheon did a really, really good job with his ultimate right there. But they just overcommitted. And, um... Ooh actually winning yeah so um like we can actually also put the part of the blame on me as i said earlier on in the game you have to look at your team you have to look at what they do what they want to do and even though farming with ezreal is the right call even though i'm actually really ahead in this game i still want to look at the potential better things that i could have done in this game which is actually just stick to stick with my team because we would have still won the team fights oh what am i gonna do here i go on the nasus Right, the, the, the Baron, the Baron. Boom, I got it. And I kill both of them. Man, my Ezreal, guys. My Ezreal is hella clean, guys. My Ezreal is hella clean. Let me tell you that your Ezreal can also become incredibly good if you just, if you just follow the tips. And as I said, what's so important is just know what your team wants to do. Because that's ultimately what's going to make this game really, really hard. And as I said, you really want to watch till the late game. I should have, like, it's not only about micro plays, about hitting your stuff. Oh my god, what are we doing here? Yeah, here I'm just dead. I can't do anything against the Bane. Yep. I got caught here. So stupid. Yep, there it is. Really, really stupid. We just gave them Infernal Dragon. Ah, it's not good, man. I screwed up. I didn't play to my win condition. The win condition of Vayne is obviously 1v1 situations. This Vayne will never lose a 1v1 against anyone, because that's how Vayne works. So I should have known that Vayne can just chase me, so I should not have gone in there. And you have to know like the strengths and weaknesses of your composition and the enemy's composition. It's so damn important. I mention it so often. Like, 
I sh why did I do that? I should have just gone for team fights because team fights should be easy for us to win. But 1v1 situations, I'm never gonna win. It doesn't even matter how, how strong I get. I'm never gonna win a 1v1 against a vein. So you have to keep those things in mind, guys, when playing against the enemy. You have to know how to actually win the game and how can we win team fights. Because especially we have Pantheon who can catch out enemies. We have Braum, you know, who has insane CC. We have Zix who deals insane damage in team fights. We have me. We have well, Nunu is good in team fights too, I guess. And we just we have a team fighting ability, uh, team fighting composition. And me and Zix can provide so much damage per second, especially me. We're just gonna win. I'm gonna provide more damage than the Vayne. So that's what we need to do: just fight in team fights. However, what's happening here again? We're going for a skirmish again. Not good. I still got a kill though, but yeah, bro, uh, he, they popped this guardian angel. This this only worked because I'm so fat. Normally, like we would have gotten screwed here. So as an Ezreal, you're actually really vulnerable in one v ones. That's what I want to say. Like, um, you, and you'll see it happen in this game. It's gonna be so annoying. Uh, you want to be sticking with your team because when you're with teammates, Ezreal become unstoppable. Whether it's like your Janna or your Braum or just your teammates to engage for you, you want to be around teammates because that's the whole power of Ezreal. You, you don't want to be caught out in a 1v1 situation. You're not vain. You can't protect yourself in a 1v1 situation or Tristana or something, right? You're Ezreal. You provide a lot of damage per second, but in a 1 versus 1, it's a bit questionable. You're not as strong, guys. Keep that in mind. So here my team is again together as four. Like, why are they not waiting for me? Look at this. So I'm going for the blue buff here. Take a look at this. I'm picking them. Guys, stop going. Stop going there. Look at this. Just a vein shows up. Look at this. What can I do? I can't do anything. I just die. Like my team is like okay, I don't want to blame the team because I should have also known that someone could have been there. But honestly, like, they should have been a bit back with me, but I should have also been very careful that I should not have gone. So what I made, the mistake that I made there, which you shouldn't make in the late game, is even though it might look like a free blue buff or a free red buff, an enemy could always be hiding in the bush like that vein did. So what I should have done instead is, you know, as I said, just look at what your team does. And now my team actually goes for the vein and they give them a free baron, which is still fine, but I should have known, okay... Oh, it's a Nunu. He's gonna steal it, isn't he? He actually didn't. Nunu should have actually easily gone. Yeah. <laughs> Nunu, Nunu, normally Nunu is able to secure every single objective very easily, but unfortunately our Nunu didn't do it. But what I should have done there is I should just not have gone for the blue buff. Red buff was still okay, because it's really close to me, and I had pretty nice vision of it. But the blue buff was all the way in the blue jungle where we had zero vision. We only had vision uh, near the dragon, but that's not enough. Like, there could always be an enemy right there. The enemies could always have vision. They can know where you are. So that's why it's actually really risky to go for things like that. I should have just walked to my team and gone to my team, right? Help them with the team fight. It's still fine. I mean, like, I'm still super strong, but it's just their vein is full build now. So, you know, I'm not super ahead anymore. It's not like I'm snowballing the game. The Elder Dragon is up. Elder Mountain Dragon as well. The Mountain Dragon is, in my opinion, the most important dragon when there is an Ezreal in the game, by the way. Because the Mountain Dragon denies so much of the poking potential of Ezreal. Like, it, it, it's really, really good when, when you get the Mountain Dragon. Either with or against an Ezreal, of course. Oh my god, look at the damage. So here I'm just staying in the background. As you can see, team fights easy. Team fights are so easy, but look at the bot lane. Can you guys feel that? Can you guys feel that? Please tell me you feel that one. You feel this one. No, I can tell you guys feel this one. This one, you can feel this one deep in your heart. This one hurts. This one really hurts. This one really, really hurts, guys. Oh, that one really hurts. <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you still enjoyed today's video. 30 minute video of course, really really fun. And uh, yeah, I will see you all 
in the next wild rift video wait i actually need to wait for five seconds for it to be a 30 minute video i'll time it bye bye